Cause life has been lonely less than a day. Okay, this is Lynn, my warm kitty, soft kitty, little ball of love. She's been my kitty for a long, long time. And I love her so much. And she's my soft ball of fuzz. Um, she's so cute, and she reminds me of a little fox. I mean, just look at her back. She's a little nervous because I'm trying to hold her so you can see her on the camera. But okay, I'm going to describe her, and this way you can see the description. But okay, her base coat is brown. This part down here is brown. And you can see it kind of under here. And then she has black spots on top and on her floofy tail. And then she has these little red spots on top right here right here she has a few on her tail and she has a really puffy tail like a fox her tail is puffier but she's been losing a lot of fur since it's been so hot out and she has plenty of cute nicknames baby lynn baby lynn my foxy just so adorable and sweet and she it can be a brat sometimes like right now she's on this at the end of the bed and she likes to hide under bed sometimes that's how it, i where I had to go get her so I could do the speech. She likes to hide in closet and in boxes and whatever's novel to her. But she just loves it. Loves playing hide and go seek. And she likes playing chase with me and my dog and my other cat. My other dog is a wiener and they're best friends. I don't know how, but she just loves her. And my other cat's a white Persian. Her name is Snowy. And they Snowy's older, but they always like to box around and stuff. I love babies since he was born. They're born and they put the kittens in a little laundry basket and they were so cute and I saw them and their eyes opened and they were this tiny and they were so adorable. And her mother and father were cats from a previous litter and their mom got pregnant and had six kittens. Two of them were them. Her mom was one of the black ones. There was another blackish one that was kind of like Lynn but she was fully black. Her name was Ivy. And then her, her, as we call it, her uncle daddy, Lynn's uncle daddy, was a big, huge orange tabby. And he had another brother or sister. And then there were two white kittens. We didn't keep the white kittens. So we went and took them to a pet store. I can't remember if it was Uncle Bill's or what it was. To get, found them homes. And so then her mom and dad, we were going to get them fixed. And a few days, a few days after we found out they were that she was pregnant so and she makes me happy when I'm sad because some days at school are kind of hard and or if I'm having you know if I'm having issues with something or other I just grab a big old armful of Flynn because an armful of kitty makes everything better I just grab her up and I love on her and it makes everything better well most things better and I love her when I'm in a bad mood or need to feel better, I just grab her up. Now, when baby doesn't get to go outside, she throws a whole fit until we let her out. Like she did yesterday, because we didn't let her out stay yesterday because it rained. And she was just throwing a fit and crying and stuff yesterday. And today is just so bad. It's that's the only time she's really ever bad. She loves to play outside and frolic through the yard and but we have to put a leash on her so she doesn't run away. We can't. She's not a real outdoor kitty. She couldn't survive out there on her own. And if we don't let her out sometimes, she'll try to slip by, rub past your leg, try to flirt away outside. You do. And so we have to be careful. And she gets in a blind fury of where if we don't let her outside, where she'll go. And she'll go pop, pop. And she'll hit the window and she'll cry until we let her out. And she's not really much for just in a blind fury, she'll thump the door. And she's not ever much for being bad, except for that, except when it comes to her outside. And so she hates rain or she hates snow, but she gets a little stir crazy and she starts jumping around all over the kitchen and around the house and starts exploring and stuff. And you don't want her to get hurt or anything. So one time we just wanted to see how she would react in the snow so it was just so adorable so we opened the door she stepped out on the white free 
fresh, clean, shiny snow, and my mom hadn't even shoveled the porch because she usually shovels it for our wiener dog. And so she stepped in the snow and it crunched under her feet and crunch, crunch, crunch. And so then we thought, well, she's got to be cold. And she'd go every couple, she'd go two feet and then she'd kick her little feet and she'd shake off all the snow. And she'd go two more feet and she'd kick and shake off all the snow. And it was so adorable. And so she'd go over a couple feet and do that. And so we put these little jackets that my mom has for her wiener dog, her beloved goose, her wiener dog. And so she puts it on. So we put it on her, and it was so poofy and fluffy on her. And she was to do that stiff arm thing animals do when you try to put jackets on them. And she'd walk like this through the snow. And it was so cute. And she'd totter back and forth. And she'd totter to the door. And she'd sit there and look back and forth. And she sits there and waits for us to let her in. So we wiped off her paws with a towel that we keep by the door for the dog or when she goes outside. And she curled up in a little chair and went to sleep in the nice warmth. The springtime is the only time when it really rains here. I mean, it rained yesterday, but it hasn't rained here in months. So the ground is muddy and we don't let her out to play because if she does, she gets muddy paws and legs and it's too hard to give her a bath because she's the worst to give a bath. She'll cry and throw a fit and she'll paw at the sink and it's just, <laughs> it's just really bad. And so we don't usually let her out. I mean, the towel won't always usually get off all the mud, so we don't usually let her go out and play right after it snows. Um, she is... She just loves it. She loves the flowers, and she loves to hide in them. And um, even that, when it's raining, she's locked inside. In the spring, when it does rain, she loves to watch the rain, and she'll jump up and try to catch the rain. And she likes to watch the birds play in the puddles, or when there used to be puddles, when there used to be grass. And she likes to watch them dance in the rain. And she loves to watch um, the rain come out of the downspout. And she loves to watch it when it gets foggy and she loves to hide in the flowers and when it dries up outside and we'll go in the bushes and we'll lurk around for her and you'll see this little brown head and she thinks she's all hidden we have to go untangle her and get her out and a few times she's been hidden in the flowers and I've had to crawl in there and get her or my mom has and she's just silly she's just so silly um in this warm summer, sometimes it's too hot to let her out, like lately. But in the fall, sometimes there's a little breeze. But in the summer, when it, she likes to hunt moles, because we have these moles and they are between our neighbor's yard and our yard. And so she likes to crawl and hunt them. And she's one time gotten a bird, but he died. We tried to save, me and my mom tried to save him, but he was a little baby. And I felt, she felt really bad because she got punished for that one. But, um... She like the one thing she doesn't like is the sprinklers when it start or when it starts raining and if it sprinkles the sprinkler gets on her she gets all mad and she gets crunched up and she's like kick me inside now and it's so cute and she's a mighty hunter and she likes to pounce and she likes to hunt and jump and sometimes she'll dig for the moles and it's so cute she doesn't dig big holes but sometimes she'll dig a little bit but um. She pouts if she doesn't get what she wants. She pouts, and if it rains, she'll sit underneath the stool, and she'll pout, or she'll pout by the door, because there's times that we have not noticed it's raining, because sometimes she won't hear it if it's just drizzling out or whatever, and she'll sit under the wooden stool and pout and pout, or if the sprinkler gets on her, she'll sit under the stool and pout, and it's so adorable. But then we let her in. And we tossed her in the leaf piles because we used to get a lot of leaves before the trees were, like, dying here. But last year we got a lot of leaves, so we put, we'd, Mom would make leaf piles. And so we'd throw her in the leaves, and she, she would just disappear because of her colors, and she'd just disappear. And all we see is this little leash, and that would be Lynn. And we'd just pull her out with the little leash to make sure we could get her out. And she has fun jumping in the leaves, and she chases them all through the yard. It's so cute. Um, oh, and she likes to hide in the grass because it's so dry, but now it's kind of starting to irritate her because it's crispy and it's all dead, so there's not enough for her to hide out of and act like she's really hiding. And she likes to watch the birds fly around, and my mom puts out bread so that they can go and they can go and dip down and 
go and just dive down and she can watch him and try to pounce. Um, she chatters and she does this chattering thing before she pounces. She goes, <laughs> and she makes this cute little sound with the birds. Um, luckily she's not gotten any birds lately, but it keeps her entertained and we're not meaning for her to get birds. We just like her to have fun and watch. Um, and they dive bomb her. It's so cute. She thinks she's just a wild little lion because she does that. She just has so much fun hunting in the yard. She'd do it every day if she could. And it's just so, so little Lynn has a boyfriend named Donald. And um, he's black and white. And he's a big tomcat that we think lives over at the barn. And she just adores him so much. Um, so... Usually she's on the leech, so she can't run away, but she's seen him a few times, and he comes around more when it's warm, because they let him out, and he belongs, I'm pretty sure he belongs to them, but you only see him every once in a while, and she gets so happy when she sees him, he's either in the, she'll see him when she's in the yard, and he walks behind, there's a horse barn behind us, and she, she likes to walk, he likes to walk through the bushes, and she'll see him, and she'll go, yee, yee, yee. <coughs> or if she sees him in the window, and she just won't leave the window, and after he skitters off, she'll just stay there, and look at the window, and wait for the next couple days, because we first met him during the winter last year, because he got out, and so he'd sleep at the, sleep on our porch, and my mom put out, um, some blankets for him. Bye for the next few days, she checks over the yard, and she'll just sit there on the leash and wait for him. Oh, um, because leash is, leash is on the leash, <laughs> leash is on the leash, Lynn is on the leash, because she ran away a few times, and she was already outside a few of them, and others, she escaped from either ripping, ripping the living room windows, which are on the first floor, of course, but we leave them open sometimes, and she's gotten through them a few times. Now, most of the time, I was home, but there's one time I wasn't, I was at my dad's, and she got out. And I wasn't sure when she got out, but I just know that she did, and then it took her, my mom and my neighbor a while to find her. Um, she didn't come home till morning that day, and they put some food out, and she came home. The other time, she ripped out of her escape hatch, as she called, into the yard. We didn't notice at first, and we were watching some movie, and we paused it to get some popcorn. And I saw this giant hole in the screen, I was like, it doesn't make any sense. And I was like, oh no, it's Lynn! So, me and my mother rushed out into the darkness, and the grass was wet, and it was really itchy, and I already took my shower, and there was a lot of bugs out, and we looked up and down the yard, and the neighbor came out, we my mom got the neighbor, and she came out, or she saw us, and she came out, and we, f we found her a few times, and she'd run, and she would hide in other places, or she'd run between the fence, and we couldn't get her, so... We kept getting close, and she'd run away, and she's in this giant mangle of trees behind our other neighbor's yard, which kind of connects our little mangle of trees. And so she'd gotten back there, and there was a fence and a big dog, so the big dog was barking. And she was back there hiding, and, of course, I was in a, ooh, Lynn, in a t-shirt and shorts, and so that wasn't comfortable. I was out there barefoot trying to find her, because we were just in watching a movie, and I was in my pajamas. And so, we went out to this guy's yard, and I had to cut through their yard, and there's, like, common ground, because you walk through his yard to get to the pond. And so, he's out there. It's, like, not even that late. It's, like, 9 or 10 or whatever. And he has this really big, I don't know if it was a pit bull or something, and he comes out, and he's really rude, and I'm crying, of course. And this is when I was about 14, and it's dark, and... Like I told you, I'm barefooted, and this horrible guy walks out, and he has this huge, huge, huge dog, and I tell him, and he, you couldn't hear, everyone in the neighborhood, Rich can hear, because we've been yelling, Lynn, baby, and it's not like he's retarded, it's not like he's stupid, so he should be able to know what was going on, and I was crying, and I told him, looking for my cat, and he's like, I'll give you five minutes, and it was like, really, seriously, guy, and he had this big, huge, like, Rottweiler or something, and so... Thank goodness that I heard my mom yelling to say that they had found her, and so I ran out of the yard, and, um, I found the area where she was hiding, and I crawled, it was under this kind of dome of trees, where it was kind of like where a deer had nested at some point, or 
a deer nest. And I caught her and I grabbed her up and I told her to never run away. And she got spanked that day, didn't you? I don't spank her that often, but she got loads of spanks and love afterwards. And we're outside still, but we put her on her leash. And if sometimes she's gotten out before, and if she, we sometimes she gets out, but we always get her back because now she'll just sit in the yard and she'll wait for us to come scoop her up. But so sometimes she gets out in the garage, and the garage door is usually shut because there's no way we're gonna, because my mom goes out and to the garage sometimes, and we have recyclables out there. She's just being a little camera bug right now. But so, she gets out, and we'll let her play sometimes. Like, sometimes we'll purposely let her out. But, when we don't want her to, if we're getting ready to go somewhere, we can't really get her, because my mom has this old car that she doesn't really use. She's trying to sell. And so, she'll get under that, or she'll get under my mom's car, and she'll sit in the absolute middle, where there's no possible way to get her. And so, we have to wait for her to come out. So, if she doesn't come out after a while, I'll let her play for a few minutes, and then we'll turn out the light. And usually, she'll come to the door after a while, because it's dark. But the sometimes it's novel and new, so that means that she's going to play for a little bit. So, but usually she comes to the door. And I love my baby, and even through everything, and even though she runs and hides sometime, that's just my Lynn, and she's my silly little girl. And I hope you've came to love my little bundle of joy, and she's came to like you, because she's the Oh, I love her so much, and she's only a couple years old, and I love her, and she's just my little girl, and she's just so wonderful. So I hope you love and enjoy my warm little bundle. This is your touch, and this is your hair.